The rainbow looks really cool though. Look at that. Never get to see it quite like that, do you? And just when I thought we were done with updates on Background Swap, Paper Mario decides to surprise me once again. I covered the original Star Spirit card pause numerous times, but a couple friends and I began experimenting with what appeared to be a new setup exclusive to the Nintendo 64 release. On my Twitch livestream the other day, I was testing this on Virtual Console and lucked out with a successful attempt. Yeah, on VC. I've never done that before. And everything, and every time I've tested- whoa, go away dude. Every time I tested that glitch with Goomba King, it just sort of overwrote the pause. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself though, we need to talk about a new variation of the Goomba King cutscene glitch to reach this point. This can be attempted in the first run through of Prologue, but note that the Retrigger Prologue glitch could be used to have extra partners, badges, levels, and abilities early into the story. So as we know from playing the game normally, defeating Goomba King has him retreat into his fortress, where he convinces Mario to definitely not press any switches he may encounter outside. Activate a bush, and a hidden switch reveals itself. Hitting it causes his fortress to fall and conveniently grants us access to Toad Town, but the entire sequence is handled differently than you'd probably expect. As we've witnessed in many rooms, characters and objects are stored below the room at its origin. They end up being teleported around when required for things like cinematics. And also, the developers used a couple shortcuts. For example, the blue Goomba contains the data for the Goomba King fight, even though it would make more sense if those properties were exclusive to the Goomba King himself. He also already moves around the room for a couple cutscenes, so why not just teleport him once more while his sprite is transparent and his hitbox is deactivated, and match other objects to his location? It appears to be what the developers did for the blue switch. Of course, if you were going to teleport the blue Goomba to the exact position the switch would appear, you'd want to be certain the player wouldn't encounter the Goomba King while checking the bush. Simply disable the blue Goomba's hitbox. At least temporarily, right? That's what they did, and it works. Kinda. They also programmed Mario's various menus to disable and re-enable enemy hitboxes to avoid potential glitches elsewhere. What this means is if we close a menu to enable hitboxes on the same frame the blue Goomba is teleported to move the blue switch, we can refight the Goomba King. I'm Glower, and Move Mario Paper were responsible for this cool discovery, and a more detailed explanation of this can be found in the description. The fight itself isn't broken, but after the fact we end up confusing the game. A cutscene responsible for unlocking Mario's movement plays following the battle. Like many movement manipulation glitches, we trick the game into behaving as though we are not in a cutscene, even when we are. Movement is now permitted when we transition into encounters, and the switch hitbox is still enabled thanks to that earlier exploit. There are a couple cool glitches to try from here, but the focus of this video requires a well-timed pause. Pausing into the battle has a couple strange effects. Sometimes screen tearing is visible, occasionally the pause fades out which is really odd, but most importantly, the pause can be overridden by the battle. Most of the time on Virtual Console, the pause is just cancelled even though it sounds like it went through. No additional effects. This is where it differs from N64, since in testing that always resulted in a background swap if timed properly. The Wii Virtual Console isn't quite so simple though. Notice the difference in pause timing across versions. The Nintendo 64 pauses are much faster than the Wii, despite the reduced loading times on VC. Think of the Virtual Console as an official Nintendo emulator. Some things are harder to emulate than others, like the menu system. On all platforms, there is a slight variation in the amount of time between a pause input and the menu appearing. Lag frames could be the determining factor there, and it might be the reason behind the inconsistency with battle transition background swaps on VC. The reason I say that is because lag frames can influence when a pause fully initiates, and delaying the frame the battle actually loads changes whether or not the background swap is successful. Pulling up menus delays the transition, making it a useful tool in deviating the results. This functions exactly the same as Star Spirit card background swaps, but obviously we paused during a black screen. That means everywhere in the game now has a dark, ominous feel to it. It looks sorta of like nighttime in some areas too. 
Resetting the game or pausing and unpausing will undo the glitch, so keep that in mind. This is one of those rare tricks that persists between rooms and saves, so losing a battle and being prompted to choose another file greets you with that lasting darkness effect. Something a bit more odd is how background swap reacts to rooms that call for Watt's lighting. Simply entering the area presents a visible bar across the top of the screen, and it sticks around between rooms too. Not quite sure what it is, but it stretches far enough off screen that the player would never be intended to see the full thing. There are a few rooms we can do battle background swaps in now, but I will be saving those for a future video showcasing the Nintendo 64 differences, since it is much crazier than this one. Again, shoutouts to Glower and Move for their testing with some of the glitches presented here. Be sure to subscribe, check the description, check out some of those links if you'd like to support the content. And most of all, thank you for watching!